In my last electric bike video, the e-bike 4.0 prototyping video, I designed and prototyped the motor mount, which would mount the motor just behind the seat post here and in front of the rear wheel, uh, as well as the arm for the idler pulley to keep the belt up and away from the rear frame. Now, in this week's video, I'm going to be designing and making the large pulley for the rear wheel. Now, in my version 1, version 2 and version 3 model electric bikes, uh, the large pulley on the rear wheel was 100% uh, 3D printed and it was in fact mounted to the rear wheel by cable tying it to the spokes uh, via 16 different uh, mounting points which spread the load quite well but it still put unwanted lateral force on all of the spokes. Now as this bike has a disc brake I want to utilize the mounting point of the disc brake uh, mainly because it's obviously a really strong point on the wheel and the hub uh, because it's you know it has to stop the bike really quickly so if it's designed to stop the bike really quickly surely it should be able to work well in reverse and be able to accelerate the bike really quickly the only issue with having the disc brake on the rear wheel is that it doesn't leave much space for the pulley to uh, fit into it's not so much the disc brake more the caliper uh, because the caliper runs very close to the spokes um, so i'm gonna have to squeeze a pulley in there somehow uh, without you know using the spokes as a mounting point. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the constraints, the space constraints between the caliper and the spokes, and then show you how I will get around the design and then finally manufacture it. Let's go. <laughs> this is a bike I used for the previous electric bike versions. And as you can see, there was plenty of space between the frame and the wheel, making it easy to mount a pulley. However, on the new bike, there is a disc brake on this side of the wheel, which restricts the usable space by quite a bit. It's not necessarily the disc itself that's the issue, but instead the brake caliper, leaving around 6mm of space between the spokes and the brake. As I don't want to use the spokes to structurally reinforce the pulley, it will need to be made out of something stronger than just 3D printed plastic. And I also realised that the spokes on the previous bike are quite a bit thicker than these, so that's maybe how I got away with it for so long. I have in fact changed the design of this pulley three times now due to various reasons but mainly due to the ease of mounting it to the disc hub. It's very tight to fit a pulley onto the end of the same bolts that mount the disc, so I designed a plate which mounts on the opposite side of the disc and allows bolts to go through the disc. This doesn't put any unwanted load on the disc other than a clamping force, which should only aid in reinforcing it. The next stage was to cut the parts out of aluminium on my CNC router, which I haven't done before. As aluminium is more difficult to cut than the wood I've been previously cutting, I raised the cutting bed to reduce any unwanted lateral forces in the motor and the gantry. I then attached the aluminium sheet to the bed using four screws and proceeded to set up the machine as usual. Before this, I had done a whole lot of research into various cutting bits and feeds and speeds. I think I tried four to five different feeds and speeds calculators before finding a result that felt right. I will add the feeds and speeds information in the description of this video. So here goes the first cut. And it's working. For those of you who don't know what feeds and speeds are, when cutting material, such as aluminium, you want to be able to cut clean chips off the metal. So not a fine dust, but also not huge chunks. Cutting a fine metal dust can cause overheating of the cutting bit and material, and cutting big chunks can put unwanted stress on the bit. Both cases can shorten the life of the cutting bit. It's quite a bit more complicated than this, and there are lots of information online if you want to learn more. I'm going to do a bit of skipping through this project because I made a few mistakes with the first pulley. Essentially, I wanted to cut the outer ring of the pulley and its spokes in one piece, then bend the pulley spokes so it would avoid the brake caliper, but it proved to be quite difficult to evenly bend the spokes of the pulley to the correct same angle. The mounting of the pulley works well with the clamping solution through the disc, with the two 6mm spacers to shift it as far from the disc as possible. However, when mounted on the bike, it didn't run very true due to the poorly bent spokes. The final solution I came up with was to cut the spokes of the pulley individually, which would allow me to prototype just one and bend it until it fit the wheel properly. Then once I knew the clearance of the brake caliper was correct, I could repeat this process another five more times and have a relatively straight pulley. Now I've received one question quite a few times on my previous electric bike videos. How do you design the large pulley? 
Well, when I initially designed it, it was a lot of trial and error by printing pulleys, seeing whether the teeth meshed properly, and trying it again. So to save you the hassle of this trial and error, here is how I designed the pulley for a HTD5 belt. Obviously, if you use a different style of belt, these dimensions won't work, but you'll get a rough idea of how I designed it. In Fusion 360 CAD software, draw two construction circles with a diameter of roughly how large your pulley will be. Anything between 100 and 300 millimeters will work, just don't make it 5,000 millimeters or 2 millimeters. Then draw a horizontal construction line from the center to the outer circle and another construction line at a slight angle. Constrain the diameter between the two circles as 2.25 millimeters. Then draw a line upwards from the end of the horizontal line. This line needs to be vertical, so I tend to draw it at a slight angle and constrain it to be vertical. Then draw two arcs, the first being tangent with the vertical line and the second being tangent with the first arc. The end of the second arc must be constrained to the slightly angled line and the inner circle. Dimension the radius of the arcs as shown and then dimension the distance between the ends of both construction lines as 2.5 millimeters. This is now half of a tooth and needs to be mirrored in the horizontal line. Now you need to determine the diameter of your pulley depending on the number of teeth required. This is done by dimensioning the angle between the two construction lines. To find this angle, divide 180 by the number of teeth you want on your pulley, which in this case is 180 teeth. So 180 divided by 180 is 1. Therefore this angle is 1 degrees and the circle should automatically adjust their diameter. In this case, the diameter is roughly 286.5 millimeters. Then you need to make the other 179 teeth appear by using the circular pattern tool and selecting the individual components of the tooth, as well as the center point of the circle. Then enter the number of teeth you require and click OK. There you have it, a sketch for a 180 tooth pulley. Now you can extrude and do whatever you want with it. In terms of printing, there are two main settings that are required to achieve a good tooth to belt fit. Number one is to print with only two outer walls and number two is to print these two walls with the outer wall first. Oh, and you need to have a pretty well-tuned printer for a pulley of this size, because if the belt doesn't fit properly, it can cause all sorts of issues. Once I was happy with the design, I proceeded to print the pulley ring using PETG plastic from my filament sponsor, 3D Prints UK. This was printed with 50% infill to make sure it was strong enough to hold its shape once on the bike. It was then just a case of assembling all the parts and mounting it to the bike. So the large rear pulley is now complete. Uh, it was quite a bit more difficult than I'd initially thought trying to squeeze it between the caliper and the spokes, uh, but it's turned out really nicely. It's, um, it has a bit of flex in the lateral direction, you know, towards the camera and away from it, um, but it would need to flex by quite a bit, probably at the tip of the pulley, probably a good 15, 20 millimeters before it hit the uh, caliper at the root of the spoke. Uh, in terms of the torque direction, it virtually has uh, no flex at all. Uh, there's no way the torque from the motor will produce uh, enough force to flex it in that direction. So I'm really pleased with the way that's turned out. There are a few other things I want to address, uh, which you guys are probably wondering if you haven't written a comment yet, is that I've changed the tires on this bike. The original tires in the last electric bike video uh, were off-road knobbly style tires, um, and they were the ones that came with the bike. They were in fact really thin tires and ran really thin inner tubes. Uh, because these are 29 inch wheels, they're really big. You want to keep them as lightweight as possible so that you can pedal them quickly and accelerate fast. However, simply wheeling this bike down my garden to my shed, I managed to get a puncture. So that was a bit of a pain. Since the moment of purchasing this bike, I had wanted to put uh, road style tires on just because I prefer the way that these handle uh, round corners. You can lean them over a bit better in comparison to knobbly tires uh, and also less rolling resistance. So hopefully more efficiency and more range. Now these tires are called uh, Schwalbe Marathon Plus. Uh, they're quite nice tires. I think they retail for £25 per tire. However, I managed to get a deal with both tires for £35 uh, because these are really odd sized tires. Uh, they're 47 millimeter wide, uh, 700C tires, so 
47 by 622 tires. So they're essentially really wide road tires. Um, and obviously no one was buying them, so I bought um, a set for this bike. These tires also have a thick uh, rubber layer in them. I think it's rubber to prevent punctures. And I've seen some reviews claiming uh, people have ridden 4,000 miles on these tires with no uh, puncture or wearing issues. Uh, as well as that, they also claim they're e-bike ready up to 50 kilometers an hour. Um, but this bike might go slightly quicker. So uh, might need to be careful of that. <laughs> the other thing I want to address is that some of you may have realized from my last electric bike video that I mentioned I was going to do a pulley ratio of, I think it was 18 to one or 18.3 to one. So that would be a 12 tooth pulley on the motor down to a 220 tooth pulley on the wheel. However, in this video, you probably would have noticed that I said I'm putting a 180 tooth pulley on the wheel. And that's because I've completely changed the design of this electric bike. Uh, I'm in fact going to be doing a two stage step down uh, on the belt. So instead of doing a 12 tooth to a 220 tooth pulley, I'm going to be doing a 20 tooth pulley to a 40 tooth pulley, then a 20 tooth pulley to a 180 tooth pulley. I'll explain the reasons to this in my next electric bike video, but it's basically to reduce the amount of bend in the belt. When the belt flexes round a pulley, uh, it creates quite a bit of resistance and going to such a small pulley on the motor is probably going to cause uh, resistance issues as the belt bends around it. Uh, not only that, but with my last electric bike version, I had to have the belt really tight to prevent it skipping on the motor pulley. So having a large motor pulley will engage as many teeth as possible, which means I can run a lower tension on the belt, uh, which hopefully increases the or sorry decreases the resistance caused by the belt and also increases uh, the lifespan of the belt because having a belt tension too high causes it to wear out quicker so i better stop talking about all this because this is probably going to be covered better in my next week's video um, really happy with the way this uh, pulley has turned out it's really really strong uh, it runs really nice and true and um, it misses a brake caliper all good. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. A huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible and I couldn't do it without you. So a huge, huge thanks for that. And I guess that's it. See you next week. Goodbye.